I'm sure somebody will talk about the positive and negative piece and different attributes of that. But uh, I think we're going to talk also about both theoretical aspects and practical aspects of the Roman piece. In um, the United Nations, the term human securities uh, evolved um, and it has uh, four conceptual pillars that people have a right to freedom from fear, freedom from want, freedom to live in dignity, and freedom from hazard impacts such as disasters. Uh, much of our history across the world has been based on uh, what we could say battleship diplomacy. Uh, this is the USS Iowa, one of the largest battleships in the world today. Uh, for all history, the most powerful military force has allowed countries to promote their ideas and colonize others. Um, this ship did make a trip to Tokyo Bay in 1945. Uh, as part of the uh, end of the war uh, surrender. Container ship terminals uh, perhaps have more to do with the realities of communications between people and peacemaking. The metal container is seen around the globe as a major freight transport system for the exchange of goods. Globalization of industry also transfers jobs around the world to exploit cheaper labor markets are raising many questions, uh, which we're going to consider. Uh, do you know a metal container? Do you know what a container is? Um, I own a container. I don't own a container ship, I own a one container. My, my precious things in New Zealand are stored in a container. Uh, but we can also move things uh, and store. It's very convenient. But uh, this exchange of goods uh, uh, is uh, something which I think affects uh, everyone here. Do we also exchange ideas? I think so. Some reflections on peace. Uh, uh, do all people have a right to a peaceful life? Yes. 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 Relationships of love and respect between other groups are critical to peace. So, in order to have peace, we need uh, relationships of love and respect between peoples. Uh, if we don't build those relationships, uh, it's going to be difficult to um, sustain peace. Is uh, relationships something that only, only human beings have? This is uh, some traditional beehives in Hungary. The social system of a honeybee involves separation of its specific cells to promote the survival of a whole hive. Uh, this building could look like a beehive. Some buildings in large cities remind me of beehives, don't they? All the people go in, they have specific jobs to do, and then they uh, walk or fly out. Um, okay, not too often. Um, this system of relationships has evolved in a evolution for several billion years, and uh, we can see it in the Some sites that are very special to certain groups uh, can become sources of conflict. This is a picture of the cave of the patriarchs or cave of the fathers from Hebron in Palestine and Israel. Uh, built to express the love of God and love of ancestral patriarchs and matriarchs. It's reviewed by Jews, Muslims and Christians for over two millennia. And in fact if you go here, the bottom part here, this up to this level, was built by King Herod. King Herod, uh, if you are a Christian or a Jew, uh, you probably heard of them. Okay. And so people, we have a, here a church, a synagogue, and a mosque in the same building. Actively worship. And underneath here, 
for the, the fundamentalists of any of those faiths, uh, they believe Adam and Eve are underneath. Okay. Adam and Eve. Have you heard of Adam and Eve? The one um, in the religious uh, tradition. <coughs> Actually, uh, still some very old people are buried there. Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Jacob, who were important for the, all these three faiths, had their graves under this building. So a very holy site. Of course, this can cause some friction. And uh, we can see that with the whole land of Palestine and Israel. And uh, lands that are meaningful uh, find it very difficult. Can we resolve human conflict by violence or not? Uh Shinri in Japan is an expression of differences may be decided by a samurai crime. And in fact, the uh, duels to, uh, to fight, to resolve differences, uh, were found in many cultures. Uh, hopefully none of you today will challenge me with, uh, if I insult your honor by claiming let's find a jewel in the garden outside. Okay. My uh, grandfather, uh, when he visited the uh, Eiffel Tower, was he from England, a hundred years ago, he uh, stood on a Frenchman's toe, which was not a very good idea. The Frenchman challenged him to a jewel by pistols. Uh, fortunately, through intercession of some people with good sense, uh, some apologies would save the day. Uh, otherwise, I might not have been here. Uh, but this uh, sort of honor that I'm talking about has some traditions. We can see uh, when we came to Hiroshima, the end of hopefully a, a cultural conflict, the beginning of a culture of peace. And uh, that's why it's very meaningful for our conferences in Japan. And uh, um, I think you're aware of these uh, photographs. This photograph from the top. Uh, do you know what this photograph is? I'm sorry, it's very difficult to see on this wall. What is it? Anybody know? Fukushima. No, it's, uh, it's from Hiroshima. These are the steps of the first uh, Japan bank. This is a shadow of someone who perhaps all that's left is a shadow. Right, so the culture of peace began in Hiroshima. It's a very critical moment in the world affairs. And so through that, we've been trying to promote um, uh, different movements, and I want to talk about those. Uh, the 10th International Youth Peace and Master Training Workshop will be held in, uh, in Indonesia, in Purwokerto uh, and Bandung. Do you know what happened in Bandung 60 years ago? Anybody? Not a lot of movement. The Asia Africa Summit, and that's why you probably heard that your Prime Minister, if you're from Asia, your Prime Minister or President from all the countries gathered in Bandung. Uh, and uh, we're having a little bit of youth people there as well. If you're interested, uh, please join us. Uh, what do we do in these peace education workshops? Well, uh, so far 600 youth have joined the Youth Peace Ambassador workshops, and about one week they come and learn how to develop a community service action plan. The action plans could be from many different areas. Uh, you can find them on the website. Of the Biosafety Institute. Um, and uh, then they come back and try and um, uh, implement. The first one I held in Hiroshima um, in 2010. And it may be interesting for you, some of you know that uh, with this gentleman, uh, Mr. Tom Jonas, uh, partly out of those meetings we decided to establish a university in the United States. Uh, which is, uh, but at this time I was working with the University of Asia Pacific region. And uh, so they had that meeting in Hiroshima, the second group we met in Phnom Penh, in Cambodia. Uh, and we see the number of participants and action plans developing. The third group in Penang, in Malaysia. 
So usually we meet in a place of international dialogue. Um, and uh, youth became very interested in these activities. The fourth group we came back to Hiroshima, and this is actually referred to as the Itajima. Itajima Naval Base, does anybody mean that? Do you know what Itajima is? Who knows what Itajima is? Akiko? Have you been to Itajima? Do you know what Itajima is? No? Okay, it's very close to Komoto. Well, it's, it's off the coast in Hiroshima. It's the Naval Academy. It's the Japan's West Point. West Point, Dartmouth, Itajima. These were the three uh, major naval training academies in the world. And uh, it was not bombed. It was used as the occupation headquarters afterwards. And it keeps the uh, hair of Lord uh, Togo, Admiral Togo. You remember Admiral Togo? First uh, Asian to win a war over Russia, the battle. And uh, also a hair of Lord Nelson. Lord Nelson uh, saved England from the French. Okay, so this is very interesting in the Tajima Island of Hiroshima. You should go there. Very historic. Um, but, uh, we tried to build peace there. Uh, we have a peace park in Thailand. Um, I don't know these slides. You can see, usually, you know, we were having um, between 60 to 100 participants, around 30 to 40 action plans, trying to get people uh, thinking. The uh, seventh one we held in Nepal. Uh, unfortunately, these, uh, Nepal has suffered a dramatic earthquake. Um, uh, we had the eighth one in the uh, United States. These are some of the themes of what young people thought is peace. So this is a sort of what they, they actually plan. They can choose anything they like. So uh, maybe make a peace club, make a film about peace, make radio, poetry, art, uh, sports for peace, um, abolish nuclear weapons, deal with challenged communities, Deal with women's and rights and gender. Deal with the international space and peace. And uh, all sorts of issues. So, peace, if you're interested, is uh, very broad. Many of the activities uh, can be channeled in the name of peace. The second group of youth forums um, is Youth Looking Beyond Disaster. In fact, I have. Um, uh, some trainings about workshop and Cindy, Cindy is here, Maria from Indonesia. But we've had a, another series of youth forums to deal with uh, how do we rebuild communities after disaster. And the next one we have is in June in uh, Arizona, and then the seventh uh, will be back in Nepal um, uh, with our uh, friends from Nepal. And some are already working on their action plans. Now. Uh, so, this is a view of the Grand Canyon. If you're interested, please come to uh, visit us. Uh, we established, we have conferences here, and we established a university <coughs> for the American University of Sovereign Nations. It's on sovereign, United, uh, sovereign land. Uh, 577 tribes in the United States have sovereign land. In Japan, uh, Ainu do not have sovereign land yet. Uh, one day I hope that they will. Um, but the, uh, this issue of indigenous peoples having a claim to their uh, original land is uh, very critical to their identity. We have a university with students from many parts of the world. Uh, some are joining by Skype. Um, today I'm sorry if the sometimes make some noise. And uh, one of the programs uh, that we decided, uh, I decided to try and make it to the qualification for people was a certificate of community and peace to promote the solidarity of communities, uh, to work in construction of peaceful relations between all groups and assist in communities rebuilding up societies. So the program is designed to enhance the ethical reasoning of all people by providing essential component 
competent graduate education, knowledge, skills, research, service, creative and analytical critical thinking capacity. Um, if you would like, you can have the slides. Um, um, you're welcome to take these outline slides and read them detail if you like. Um, so because the community uh, disaster recovery and peace are complex disciplines, inherently multidisciplinary and concerned the practice of preventing and managing disease, promoting good health and relationships within groups of people, and advancing access to community service for all people. The values that guide the AUSM uh, certificate of community peace program include the following. To increase the awareness of public health as a public good and fundamental right. To promote diversity in ethical decision making, culture and political thought. Treat all people with respect and to promote intercultural understanding, to promote community solidarity, uh, to promote academic excellence and pursuit of truth, to promote human rights, fundamental freedoms, peace, and the sense of human dignity, and human respect of all people and communities. To promote and protect the human rights of all peoples in times of disaster and in times of conflict. To understand the ethical principles of different communities and sovereign nations and peoples around the world in the United Nations. And there is an overwhelming need to preserve the culture, traditions, and people, health, welfare, and rights of the community's people uh, throughout the globe. Indeed, health and public health are indisputably foundational pillars of any sustainable community, society, nation, and service found past without the use of peace. Uh, the word peoples, uh, do you know the UN Charter? What does it start with? We the peoples of the world. It's important to distinguish and for the translation very important. Peoples are different to nations. Nations at 1945 were mainly colonized nations. But peoples meant the indigenous peoples around the world. And that was the UN Charter. It's viewed in terms of peoples. Um, it was written in a very post-colonial spirit and a very inclusive. So there are a number of different peoples in the nation of Japan. And there are hundreds of peoples in the nation of the United States. Okay. Um, these are different. And we're trying to, after years of colonization and uh, killing, are trying to stop that. Um, so this certificate has a combination of a uh, combination of teaching and delivery, so people can join watching videos, group Skype, or in residence, and the training forums count as credits. So it's trying to combine a practical and uh, action together. Uh, we have descriptions, uh, these are in the catalogue, if you'd like a catalogue, uh, uh, it's on, uh, uh, on the computer. Different courses, it's been quite interesting to establish courses, um, uh, many years ago I worked in the University of Tsukuba for 15 years in Japan and then I went to UNESCO to try and uh, work with governments and countries as a whole and now I decided it's good to go back to uh, universities and uh, establish a global program in um, the United States. But we have uh, intensive conferences all around the world. So this is sort of standard and I think education is critical. We have a Master's in Bioethics and Global Public Health. Uh, 50 students from around the world have joined in the first year. It's actually the, uh, the Master's in Bioethics program with the largest number of students of any in the world. And uh, it's expanding uh, more and more. Um, so you can see uh, many subjects, and uh, as I said, you're very welcome to, to join this endeavor. It's trying to make, a, as I said, a forum for interactive ethics dialogue between people all around the world. Um, uh, some of the pictures I used I took from Biofix's Love of Life. Uh, you can get a copy from me or it's an interactive book you can get from iTunes. So in conclusion, I think we can address some of the challenges to implement Biofix for the people by the people and build peace between nations. Uh, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from all of you. Um, in case you have an uh, academic interest in bioethics, uh, the 16th Asia Bioethics Conference will be held in Boracay, the Philippines. 
I'm sorry it's very tough to go and spend time on the beach in November uh, from Japan, uh, but if you wish to join, you can. Okay. Um, uh, but we have uh, discussions uh, 20 years ago, we established the Asian Biotics Association to dialogue in a non-Western, uh, post-colonial manners about peace and ideas. And uh, we are continuing it, it's very strong. We have annual conferences now um, in different countries around Asia Pacific. And peace ethics is one of the things. Finally, uh, if you ask me the purest form of love, it is interspecies relationships. Here's an example of dolphins and dogs and humans enjoying an encounter. Um, so this is a, uh, something which biotech service is trying to do. You can find many resources if you're interested on environmental ethics topics. These are some books uh, you can find on the website. Um, uh, I think uh, I want to talk about them. You can download if you like. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if it's time for questions or we go on. Just a comment about the uh, Hiroshima being the beginning of uh, peace, uh, what was that again, culture. Uh, I, I, I think you're referring to the modern period. Of course, there, that sort of thing's been happening throughout history. I think in a number of very interesting examples over the periods. Uh, so, and also, Hiroshima was a result of a number of uh, chain of events. Also, so it's very, very complex issue, as you know. Yes, yes, it is a very complex issue. In the whole of the Second World War, any war is complex. There are many perspectives, and yes. In the 20th century, it was the beginning, I guess, the culture of peace, but people have tried to establish peace, and they still do. And um, sadly, people still break that as well. Yes. Uh, hello, thank you very much for your talk today. Uh, I'm from the university across the street, Joseph Diaz. And I was just wondering how the youth from the youth uh, peace ambassador training program are selected. and. Uh, what sort of, are there any conflicts that happen when, for example, someone wants to bring up gender issues, but others are from a country where the idea of gender issues are, are very different and what's acceptable to speak about? Uh, is there a difference in terms of gender issues? Okay, thank you. Um, so the youth, the, the selection process for the youth, uh, anyone can apply and uh, come. It may, unfortunately, we don't have resources or sponsorship for people. So it's based on them trying to get funding for both their action plan and uh, coming to the training. Uh, we do not have any uh, any problems in the past of, of any uh, uh, tough uh, divisions uh, between the people. Of course, people will choose action plans according to what their worldview is. Uh, one action plan, for example, was to hold a, a lesbian workshops in Indonesia uh, among youth because the lesbian issues and gay issues were, uh, and they've had a, in fact, four or five trainings since then over the last two years uh, because in the Muslim society it was very tough. Now, even though that the, the team making that project uh, seemed to, you know, was facing a cultural issue, uh, the people who uh, are the uh, Muslims in the uh, youth training workshop uh, just try and help them, encourage them to make a good action plan. People generally who come don't have a major issue. Uh, we have tried at times to get people in the middle of a conflict, let's say Palestinian and Israeli coming together. Uh, again, usually the people who come will be trying to work for good, that's why they come. Uh, the very people with a heart or concrete heart will not turn, not turn up. They're not interested in learning from other people. And uh, of course we 
Yeah, and on Facebook, uh, this group's quite large. Uh, Youth Peace and Ambassadors has 18,000 members, Taiwan. It's a large group. Um, we, and I would say we never get uh, uh, comments that are critical of uh, another youth in that group. Sometimes we get a strongly political statement, uh, uh, which the uh, administrator may decide is suitable or not. <coughs> Sometimes it's a Nazi comment or a comment we did not post. Um, but mostly we let people discuss these issues. And, uh, and people usually you know, they're, they're interested in these issues and building a common view. Uh, we have sometimes uh, on the Native American Indian reservations issues of mining, for example, mining and clash of worldviews where it can get quite hot. Uh, but we again have forums for people to discuss these issues. Okay. Okay. So that's that issue of development, mining, and exploitation or colonization. Sometimes that can become tough. Uh, this good. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dari Mayser, Adukta Dari Mayser. Um, the next presentation is by uh, Dr. Jose uh, Pablo de Oliveira uh, from the UNAIAS. And thank you so much.